Hi everyone, we're back to read chapter two called Tia Magdalena of Happy Birthday Josefina, book four, a springtime story. Tia Magdalena. One warm day, Tia Dolores, Josefina, and the sisters were planting seeds in the garden. Josefina used a sharp stick to make a hole in the earth. She dropped a seed in the hole, covered it with dirt, then patted the dirt in place. Josefina always liked to give the dirt an extra little pat to encourage the seed to grow. Josefina and her sisters tended their garden with care. During the summer, they'd carried water up from the stream every day to keep the earth moist. They'd pull weeds and shoo away pests. Then in the fall, they'd harvest the squash, beans, chili, pumpkins, and melons. Oh, I'd love a big slice of melon right now, said Francisca. Me too, said Josefina. She sat back on her heels for a rest. The earth was cool beneath her knees, but the sun was hot on her shoulders. You'll have to wait until the end of summer, said Clara. We ate all our melons months ago. We were lucky to save as many as we did, said Anna. The same storm that had killed Papa's sheep had flooded the kitchen garden. We'll harvest all we, can, we plant today, God willing, said Tia Dolores. She nodded toward Sombrita, who was bleeding at the birds flying low near the garden. Fear Sombrito is scaring away all the birds, trying to steal the seeds. The sis sisters laughed because the bold birds weren't the least bit frightened by Sombrita. The goat saw that she was the center of attention. She began to show off by kicking up her heels and bleeding even louder. Who is that noisy animal, someone asked. It was Tia Magdalena walking through the gate. She was Papa's older, older sister who lived in the village. The girls and Tia Dolores greeted her politely. Then Tia Dolores answered her question. That's Sombrita, she said. Her voice was full of fondness and pride as she went on to say, Josefina has cared for her since she was born. The mother died. We all thought Sombrita would die too, said Clara, who was always matter of fact. She was so weak and pitiful. Tia Magdalena looked interested. She bent down and scooped up Sombrita. She stroked the little goat gently and Sombrita settled calmly in her arms. Then Tia Magdalena looked at Josefina. Her soft brown eyes were warm. Why did you decide to take care of Sombrita, she asked. Josefina didn't know what to say. I, I didn't stop to think about it, she said honestly. I just, I had to, that's all. Has it been hard work, asked Tia Magdalena. Oh no, said Josefina, I love taking care of Sombrita. You have done a good job of it, said Tia Magdalena. She handed Sombrita to Josefina. Sombrita, uh, Som Sombrita is a fine, healthy goat. Gracias, Tia Magdalena, said Josefina. She was pleased to be praised by her aunt. Tia Magdalena was an important person in her family, especially to Josefina, because she was Josefina's godmother. She was an important, respected person in the village, too. Tia Magdalena was the curand curandera. She knew more about healing than anyone else. People who were injured or ill went for her to her for care and she always knew just what to do. Now Tia Magdalena turned to Tia Dolores. Here are the mustard seeds you asked for, she said. Tell your cook Carmen, Cameron, Carmen to brew tea from them and give it to her husband to drink if his stomach ache comes back. Gracias, said Tia Dolores, taking the leaves. Please tell her not to use it all at once, said Tia Magdalena. I haven't many leaves left. Tansy, Tansy mustard is usually blooming everywhere by now, but I haven't been able to find any yet this year. I've seen some growing by the stream, Josefina piped up. Your young eyes are better than my old ones, said Tia Magdalena. Perhaps you'll gather some leaves for me. Tia Magdalena tilted her head and looked at Josefina as if she were considering something. And perhaps when you bring the leaves, you can stay for a while and help me. 
My storeroom needs a spring cleaning. Oh, I'd like that very much, said Josefina. Good, said Tia Magdalena. She smiled and Josefina blushed with pride and pleasure. How nice to have, pleased Tia Magdalena. The very next day, Josefina skipped along the road to the village under a clean blue sky. She had a bunch of tansy mustard leaves in her hand for Tia Magdalena. Papa, Tia Dolores, and the sisters were going to the village too. Josefina had left Sombrita behind under Carmen's watchful eye. Josefina missed Sombrita, but she knew the little goat would be only in the way today. In the morning, the men and boys were going to clean out the water ditches called Aquakitkias, while the women and the girls replastered the church. And in the afternoon, Josefina would be too busy to keep an eye on Sombrita when she went to help Tia Magdalena. Most of the villagers had already gathered in the plaza where Papa and his family arrived. They called out greetings. Buenos dias, they said. Buenos dias, Papa replied. It's a fine day to work, by God's grace. It is, said Senor Sanchez, who was in charge of the water ditches. Let's begin. He and Papa and the other men shouldered their tools and set off to work, clearing the aquica. Um, it was a very important springtime job. Later in the spring, when the snow on the mountaintops melted, the aquakias had to be cleared of leaves and sticks and weeds so that the water could flow to the fields. Without water, nothing planted that spring would grow. We'd better begin our work too, said Senora Sanchez. The women and girls agreed. They took off their shoes, rolled up their sleeves, covered their hair, and tucked up their skirts. Replastering the church was another important chore. It was normally done later in the spring, but the weather had been so unusually warm the past few weeks that the women were replastering much earlier this year. Josefina was glad. As she scooped up a handful of gritty mud plaster, she decided replastering was a chore that was fun. Watch out, Josefina shouted at Clara, who stood between her and the church. Clara ducked down and Josefina flung her, ha her handful of mud plaster at the wall of the church, where it's where it stuck, splat, into a glob. Clara laughed, saying, you'll splatter mud all over if you do it that way. Clara was neat. She pressed her handful of mud plaster against the wall. But even Clara was easy going today, thought Josefina, as she spread the glob of mud over the adobe bricks so that it was smooth and even. The women and girls gossiped and chattered as they worked. The very oldest lady sat in the shadow, in the shade, keeping an eye on the babies. They called out jokes and encouragement to the others. Every once in a while, someone would start a song and everyone would join in. Voices high and low, in tune and out of tune, rose up from all around the church. Josefina liked making the church walls whole again. Later, she and some other children climbed up into the, onto the roof and spread a new layer of mud plaster on it as well. Josefina loved the feeling of the mud oozing between her bare toes it was exhilarating to be up high, closer to the huge white clouds and the brilliant blue sky. Josefina and the others shrieked with joy as they slipped and slid on the slick mud to tramp it flat. Josefina, Clara called out. She was standing below the ground, looking up, shading her eyes with her hand. Tuck your skirt up higher in the back or you'll get mud on it and look messy at Tia Magdalena's this afternoon and pull up your Pull up your rebozo so that it shades your face, Francisca added. Your nose is getting as red as a tomato. Josefina looked down at tidy, sensible Clara and beautiful Francisca, who was busy about her skin. Oh, who was fussy about her skin. She knew that right now her sisters envied her. They were too old to be on the roof. 
Almost 10 is a wonderful age to be, thought Josefina, exuberantly sloshing her feet through the mud. I'm not too old to slip and slide on the roof, and yet I'm old enough to take care of Sombrita and old enough to help Tia Magdalena. She waved to her sisters and cheerfully ignored their advice. Bless you, child, said Tia Magdalena that afternoon when she saw Josefina at the door with the bouquet of mustard leaves. Come in. Gracias, said Josefina. She stepped inside and took a deep breath. Nowhere else on earth smelled quite the way Tia Magdalena's house smelled. It reminded Josefina of the way the corner of the back courtyard smelled when the sun shone strong on Mama's flowers. But mixed in with the scent of flowers was a sharp, nose-tickling scent of spices and the musty, earthy tang of the herbs that hung upside down in bunches from the beams. Tia Magdalena smiled when she saw Josefina looking up at the herbs. You'd like to know how to use them, wouldn't you? She asked. Josefina nodded, wondering how Tia Magdalena had known. The mint leaves ease stomach aches. The pennyroyal brings a fever down. I use the man, uh, manzanilla flower to make a tea to cure a baby's colic. Ha! Tia Tia Magdalena said, pointing to each herb as she named it. And speaking of babies, how is your sweet sombrita today? She's very well, thank you, answered Josefina, grinning. She's very fortunate to have you caring for her, said Tia Magdalena. Her face looked merry. Tia Magdalena was much older than Papa. Her gray hair was streaked with white. But when she smiled as she did now, her expression was lively. And when she moved, her step was quick and light. Now I must do, do some work, she said. Come with me. Tia Magdalena led Josefina to the small storeroom at the back of her house. The ceiling was low and there was only one narrow window. But the window looked bright, looked bright because the walls were whitewashed a snowy white and the wooden table and door frames were polished until the wood was a shiny yellow. More herbs hung from the beams in this room. Along one wall, there were shelves lined with jars of all shapes and sizes. Tia Magdalena tilted her head toward the jars. Here's where I need your help, she said to Josefina. Her eyes sparkled. Why don't we make a game of it? You lift a jar down from the, sh the shelf until inside you see if you can guess what's in it. I'll dust the jar, you dust the shelf, and then you can put the jar back, all right? See, said Josefina. She reached for the biggest, most important looking jar of all. It was blue and white china. Oh, not that jar, said Tia Magdalena. It's empty. It looks very old, said Josefina. Indeed it is, said Tia Magdalena. It's probably the oldest thing in this house. It's even older than I am, she joked. It's an apothecary jar. I don't know how it came to be in our village, but I know that there's been, that it's been here for more than a hundred years. The woman who was cu Curiander before I was gave it to me. She got it from the woman who was Curiander before her. Long ago, I believe there was a whole set of jars like it. That's the only one left. T. Magdalena pointed to a smaller jar next to the blue and white one. Let's start with that jar instead, she said. Josefina took the smaller jar off the shelf and looked inside. It looked like pumpkin stems, she said. Could it be? See, said Tia Magdalena, you're sharp to recognize them. She dusted the jar as Josefina dusted the shelf. There's nothing in the world better than a, better for a sore throat, she said. You toast you wrote you toast the pumpkin seeds, grind it into a powder, mix it with fat and salt, and rub it on the throat inside and out. Josefina wrinkled her wrinkled her nose, and then she smiled the inside of the jar. I think it's bear grease, she said. Right again, said Tia Magdalena. You mix it with onions and rub it on a person's chest to ease congestion. The next jar Josefina opened made her sneeze. 
Oh, that must be immoral, said Tia Magdalena, chuckling. It makes you sneeze and sneeze and sneeze. The more you sneeze, the sooner your cold is gone. Josefina enjoyed helping Tia Magdalena. Every jar had a story to it. Um, because every jar held something that Tia Magdalena used as a remedy. There was dried deer blood to be mixed with warm and drunk for strength. There was vinegar that was so strong that it made Josefina's eyes water. It was used as a, as a soak to stop infections. In another jar, there was a terrible smelling herb that was used to soothe achy joints. Josefina guessed what was in most of the jars, but once she came to something she didn't recognize, I don't know what this is, she told Tia Magdalena. That's the root of a globe mallow plant, said Tia Magdalena. I crush it and make it paste to put on a rattlesnake bite to draw out the poisonous venom. She handed one of the roots to Josefina. Put that in your stomach and take it home with you she said with a mischievous look, and someday ask your papa if he recognizes it. Papa, asked Josefina. See, si, said Tia Magdalena. Once when he was a boy just about your age, he was guarding the sheep. He took, uh, he tried to scare away a rattlesnake by hitting it with a pebble from his sling, and he missed. The snake got mad and bit him. Your papa killed the snake with a rock, before he came to me for help. Uh, that was very brave, but very foolish of him. If you don't get the venom out right away, it can kill you. She shook her head. I'll never forget the sight of him coming toward me, so proud of his own courage, and with that dead snake slung over his shoulders. Josefina put the root into the pouch and shuddered. She hated even hearing about snakes, but she liked to hear Tia Magdalena tells stories about Papa when he was a little boy. Your Papa was always too fearless and too stubborn for his own good, Tia Magdalena said as she dusted a jar, and too quiet. But that didn't matter when your Mama was alive. She knew that she, he was thinking anyway. Josefina was surprised at how easy it was to talk to Tia Magdalena about Mama as they worked. Sometimes it seems so long ago that Mama died, Josefina said. Sometimes it seems like it just happened. And sometimes I'll see Mama in a dream and it seems as if she, she's still with us. See, said Tia Magdalena. Her own brown eyes seemed to see right through Josefina's heart. That is how it is always going to be for, for you. See, said Josefina running her cloth over a dust, a shelf to dust it. And for Papa too, I think. He's not quite so quiet and sad as he was uh, just after Mama died. It, had better, it has been better for us all since Tia Dolores came. We needed her. Well, said Tia Magdalena, handing a jar to Josefina, perhaps she needed you too. Josefina wondered what Tia Magdalena meant. But just then, Tia Magdalena said, I think it's time for a cup of tea, don't you? And so Josefina didn't have a chance to ask. Oops. Okay, and that is the end of chapter two. And next time we'll read chapter three.